Okay, so these are the Maxwell's equation provided by uh, Gauss law, divergence of B, Faraday's law, and Ampere Maxwell's equation. Now, if we set the that there are no charges and currents, and we are in free space, so that means uh, this equation, this uh, Gauss law, it will be now be reduced to the electric field being divergent less, and the current of B will only include your electric displacement. Uh, your uh, current displacement. Okay, so for no charges and no current and in free space, your Maxwell equations are reduced to this four simple equation. But you will notice here that these equations are coupled. So we say coupled that there are equations, especially equation number three, Faraday's law and Ampere's law, that this equation entails an equation involving both electric and magnetic field. Okay, so these are, although these equations are first order, the, they are partial differential equations, but they are called the electric and magnetic field are coupled. Now let's try to decouple. So we say decouple. We are going to derive an equation or a series of equation uh, that involves uh, electric and magnetic fields alone for each equation. Now, let's say, for example, let's take the curl of Faraday's law. So we take the curl of Faraday's law. So that means the curl of the curl. Of course, we can do this because the curl of a vector is a vector, so we can take the curl of the curl of a vector. Okay, so your identity here, uh, your vector identity that will be used here will be given by the divergence or uh, the gradient of the divergence of E minus the Laplacian of E. Okay, of course, you can refer to your book regard uh, using this uh, regarding this equation or this identity and this is equal to the negative partial derivative of the magnetic field with respect to time but we have to take the curl of this because we took the curl of uh, of the curl of e Okay, so because this is a differential, this this differential, remember this differential is in uh, the spatial coordinates x, y, z. So we can actually, and this differential is in time. So that means we can rewrite this as the derivative with respect to time of the curl of b. Okay. So this equation uh, tells us that the this term, uh, this uh, this binomial, the divergence of the uh, the gradient of the divergence of e minus the Laplacian of e is equal to the derivative partial derivative of e uh, partial derivative of uh, of this term with respect to time, negative. So this is negative, V naught, epsilon naught, times the second derivative of E with respect to time. Okay? And we know that the divergence of E is zero. So this is zero. So therefore, this is now reduced to the Laplacian of E equals negative R uh, equals mu naught epsilon naught times the derivative of E with respect to time. Second derivative. 
Now in one dimension, let's say in x in x axis or in x component, okay, this equation becomes second derivative of t respect to x, and this is equal to mu naught epsilon naught partial derivative of e with respect to time second. So what do you notice here? This is actually a standalone second order difference. Okay. Now let's do the same for magnetic field. So in this case, what we're going to do is, of course, we're going to take the curl of the curl of B. Again, we will follow this identity. Okay. And this is, I'm ah, sorry, B. And the divergence of B is equal to zero. So this is equal to the negative uh, Laplacian of B. Okay, if you take the curl of this term, so this is mu naught, epsilon naught derivative of E with respect to time. So this is equal to uh, the product of mu naught E naught times the partial derivative of with respect to time of the curl of E where the curl of E is equal to this one. So this is mu naught negative, because this is negative, epsilon naught, second derivative of B with respect to time. Because this is derivative of B with respect to time, so we take the different derivative with respect to time again, so I have a second derivative, and these two are equal. So therefore, this follows the same form as this. So this is the Laplacian of B is equal to mu naught epsilon naught times the derivative of B with respect to time. And in the x component, this is equal to second derivative of B with respect to x. And this is equal to mu naught, epsilon naught, second derivative of B with respect to that. So what do you notice here? This equation and this equation actually follow what we call the one-dimensional wave equation. We're in, remember that, in your theoretical mechanics, this term, the derivative, of a function square, uh, second derivative with respect to x is equal to one over v squared derivative of this same function with respect to time, second derivative. So what do you mean by this? Okay, if this electric, if the electric field follows this equation and the magnetic field follows this equation, the resulting electromagnetic field will have a speed equal to 1 over square root of mu naught epsilon naught. Imagine that. So what is the speed? Can you tell me? Can you calculate the speed, please? You can use your calculators right now. We can use the values of the permittivity and the permeability of free space. And what is the speed? Can somebody calculate it for me? Eric, Ace, or Carlos, can you calculate this for me? Speed of light, sir. Uh, can you give me the number? Uh, 
So this speed is equal to 1 over square root of mu naught epsilon. Ano sir? Yung ano po ba sir? Yung buo? Or yes. Yung... 299 792458 Yan sir. Meters per second. So and this is approximately equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay? So as you will notice here that the Maxwell's equation implied that in empty space, so that means in free space where there are no charges and no currents, your electric and magnetic fields, okay, can be in a form of a wave that travels with the speed, which is your speed of light. Okay, what's amazing about this is that your mu naught and epsilon naught, remember that, these are discussed without even, uh, without even mentioning the word light. Diba? So epsilon naught, uh, uh, we, we, we discussed epsilon naught when we started discussion with electric fields. And remember that is, this epsilon naught is a uh, proportionality constant derived using Coulomb's law. So this proportionality constant uh, has been derived way before the concept of electromagnetic waves, that electric and magnetic fields are one of the same coin. That's why uh, they, they, they are one fundamental force together with gravity, strong nuclear force, and weak nuclear force. The same goes with mu naught. Mu naught, we discussed mu naught when we, dis when we started discussing magnetic fields, specifically when we discussed mu subvert law, where currents produces magnetic field. Again, there's no mention of light there. So even, uh, so you will notice that even if we, uh, when even when mu naught and epsilon naught are determined experimentally by the Savart and Coulomb, okay, Maxwell, what, what, what Maxwell dis, uh, did is he predicted that by his Maxwell's equations, okay, uh, there exists an electromagnetic field that it travels with the speed of light, okay, in free space. Okay, also notice that uh, the Maxwell's equation, even without the correction of Maxwell, Ampere's law would still derive this equation, uh, this uh, wave equation. Okay. 